G'day YouTubers, how are you all going? The experiment I'm currently working on at the moment uses a paradigm called drug discrimination. Drug discrimination is being able to tell the difference between a number of drugs that have been administered. In this paradigm, rats are able to tell us which drug they think they received. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to talk to rats. How are you going little ratty? I'm rolling so hard right now. Oh, it's just good stuff. No, not really. Actually, we use positive reinforcement operant conditioning. What's that? Okay, so the basics, as learned in Psychology 101, is that when a behavioural response is followed by something favourable, the frequency of that behaviour will increase. For example, if you tell a dog to sit, and then when it seeks to give it a treat, the dog will probably do that behaviour again. So in our case, we teach a rat to press a lever in an operant conditioning chamber, also known as the Skinner box. Here we have a rat in a chamber who has been trained to press a lever. Every 10 presses of any of these levers earns him one sugar pellet in this case. In jargon terms, that's FR10 or fixed ratio of 10. But in order to get him to press the lever, first we shape the behaviour. So that means if the rat does something close to pressing the lever, such as sniffing it, it gets a reward of a sugar pellet. Then he has to work a little bit harder, such as touching the lever for the reward. Eventually, he will learn that pressing the lever is what gives the sugar reward. Okay, cool. Now we have a rat pressing a lever. Look at me, I'm so smart, I can press a lever. But what we want is for the rat to press a lever in response to a cue. In the drug discrimination paradigm, that cue is the interceptive effect or cue of a drug. An interceptive cue is the feelings that we feel that is caused by the drug. Like when you have had a few too many of alcohol and you're like, whoa, I can feel that shit. Or like when you can actually feel or tell that you are feeling stoned, wired, high, rolling, or whatever you want to call the different types of intoxication from drugs. They're subjective, so everyone feels something different. So when a rat feels this particular feeling, it presses a lever. But of course we have to train the rat to press a specific lever for the drug cue and a different lever for the vehicle cue. Vehicle is a substance in which the drug is dissolved in. It's inert and you might also heard it called a placebo or something like that. So if the rat is rolling, he knows that he has to press one lever and if he's not, if he's sober or feeling something completely different, he will press another lever. Rats are trained once per day. On day one, the rat is injected with a drug and is then rewarded for pressing the drug appropriate lever only. On the day after, the rat is injected with the vehicle and then he's rewarded for pressing the vehicle lever only. Then on the third day, a criterion session is held. This time, the rat is injected with the drug as normal, but now both levers reward food. If he presses the drug appropriate lever 80% of the time, this means that he has passed criterion as he was able to tell us what he received. But if he presses the vehicle lever, he's failed back to training. As you can imagine, this takes several months to train to get the rats to do it reliably. So after months of training, we end up with a bunch of rats that can tell us the difference between a drug and a vehicle. In my specific experiment that I'm working on, rats can tell the difference between 8-hydroxy-DPAT and its vehicle, saline. 8 hydroxy dpat is a full 5-HT1A agonist. What the fuck, mate? You ask? Okay, so... In the brain, you have these things that are called neurons. They released this stuff that is called neurotransmitter. These are released into a chemical synapse, which is a gap between the neuron and the cell. In this case, it's another neuron. One of these neurotransmitters is called serotonin, or more formally 5-HT, which is a more proper name as serotonin refers to blood where it was first identified. So okay, we have the 5-HT happening. 
This is released from the first neuron into a synapse where it finds a receptor that it can bind to. 5-HT has many different receptors that it can bind to, but one of these receptors is called the 5-HT1A receptor. Stimulation of this receptor has different effects depending on where in the brain it is. Now an agonist is a drug or ligand which binds to the receptor in order to activate it. An antagonist, on the other hand, binds to the receptor like the agonist, but it does not activate it. It basically blocks the receptor, not allowing the endogenous ligands to bind. We're interested in it because it's a target of antidepressant and anti-anxiety drugs. For example, buspirone is a partial 5-HT1A agonist. And of course, we're interested in social drugs and the endocrine changes caused by the drug to produce the behavioural effects. While MDMA, or ecstasy, affects different types of neurotransmitters, one of them is serotonin, and the 5-HT1A receptor and through that it mediates the release of oxytocin, a neurotransmitter slash hormone involved in social cognition as well as many other functions. Okay, so 8-hydroxydepa is a 5-HT1A receptor agonist. Basically, it behaves like serotonin, but it is selective for the, this receptor. So what I've done is train rats to recognize the difference between 8-hydroxydepa and saline using interceptive cues. Cool, cool. But what can I do with that? We can give the rat a test drug, something other than 8-hydroxydepa. For example, we can give buspirone, which is a partial 5-HT1A agonist. So if the rat presses the drug appropriate lever when given the test drug, this means it has similar interceptive effects. If it presses the saline lever, there is either no interceptive effect or there is a different one to the training drug. I've also tested several potential 5-HT1A agonists, which are new compounds from a pharmaceutical company, and I found them to respond on the 8-hydroxy lever. We also test different doses to work out the potency of the effects with a dose response curve. What we're really interested in though is these new drugs. These new compounds are thought to have different affinities for the postsynaptic and the presynaptic, aka the autoreceptors. The presynaptic agonist has shown us interesting dose response curve. It's steep, so at one dose it does not generalize, but at a very small increase in the dose, does generalize. Uh, generalizing refers to the fact that they're pressing the drug appropriate lever. The other agonists have a dose where some rats think it's 8-hydroxydepa and others don't, so it's about 50-50. This is called partial generalization and it shows that individual rats feel the effects at different doses. I've also tried MDMA but they respond on the saline lever, indicating that they have different interceptive effects compared to 8-hydroxydepat, even though um, the mechanism of MDMA does include 5-HT1A stimulation. But of course, it's a lot more complicated than that. Uh, and this does make sense because you don't see people at clubs taking buspirone instead of E. What we also want to do is confirm that the activity is actually at the 1A receptor. Um, and what we do is we pre-treat it with an antagonist. We used one called Way 100 635 and we injected the rats with it 20 minutes prior to giving the test drug. We found that it blocked responding on the drug appropriate lever very well. 100% of our rats responded on the saline lever when pretreated with the whey, which gave us further evidence that our experimental drugs produce their interceptive effects by activation of the HT1A receptor. Now, what is the purpose of this? We all know that academics are very bored people and all they do is sit around thinking of stupid questions to ask and try to answer them by wasting taxpayers' precious money. Yeah, true that. But antidepressant medication is out there and it works for some people. But many others go through the system trying different types of meds. 
and maybe if they're lucky the 12th one will work or maybe the 15th or maybe none at all and the most prescribed ones the SSRIs take several weeks to work if they are going to work and it's just several weeks too long especially if you're going to try more than one of them and then there is your side effects so what we actually need to do is first understand how mood is controlled in the brain and secondly what is antidepressant medication doing to the brain to control mood because we don't actually fully understand this then perhaps we can develop more specific medication which will work faster with less side effects the 5-HT1A receptor is looking like a promising target but who knows what the research will show further on. Now that was a pretty basic overview of my research. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, things you want to discuss, didn't get something, whatever, that's what the comment box is for. Comment away. Thanks and see you guys later.